Hi. Hi. Welcome back to Wallflowers. So I'm not sure how many people in the UK are familiar with um, the information we're going to discuss today. Um, we're actually going to discuss the public consultation for the draft legislation to support identity verification. And it was published on the 4th, the 4th of January, 23. So basically, um, Rishi um, Sunak, the UK Prime Minister, um, is attempting to force through digital ID in law by the 30th of April. And it's a coincidence that his wife, his wife's company, Infosys, will be the provider for this identity company. Um, the government have already announced that you'll need photo ID for the next um, voting in May 23. So if you haven't got photographic ID, you won't be allowed to vote. So everything that we're going to tell you now has come from the government website. It's not us making things up. This is from gov.uk. You can check it all out there and I'd advise you to go and do it now. For many years, people have called us conspiracy um, theorists when we've announced information like this or we've spoken about what is projected to come in the future. Uh, we've talked about 1984 um, theories lots of times to say our information will be given away um, and will be monitored um, by the system um, by anyone who holds our information. Um, we've also talked about um, the digitalization of the human body and we've talked about many different theories. Um, this one about the openness of the identity is happening. It's happening right now. The others are happening, but this one is in consultation from uh, the 4th of January right the way through till March. Now, the government have had um, this in the offing a couple of times before. And what they've done is they've collated information and they've actually altered the structure of how they're presenting this um, to the public. And basically the way this is actually set up now is to prompt you to just completely and utterly agree with it. So we'll just start going well, through it. Well, it's not being publicised by the government. It's just on the website. And if you happen, happen to come across it, then fair enough. But they're not publicising it and asking you to go and do it. So there's a lot to get through and we've made loads of notes. So we'll just go through it now. So it's the public consultation and how to respond. The government have provided a list of suggested questions for you to use when responding. Our preference would be for you to respond online. We cannot accept postal responses unless there are exceptional circumstances. Please respond by the 1st of March 23. A response to this consultation service is due to then be published on the 24th of May 23. So less than five months. So you've only got less than two months to get your answers in. Now, although this relates to the UK, if you're not actually living in the UK and you're living elsewhere, no matter what country you're in, I check. I suggest you check your government websites to see if there's anything in relation to this in your government websites because as a public within the UK, we're not being made aware of this at all unless we go and seek information so and if it comes in here it's coming in everywhere the same as everything else so the consultation set out by the government's proposal to enable data sharing between public authorities 
to support delivery of identity verification services to individual and households. It will be known as gov.uk one login. So number one, the purpose is the improvement of public services provided to in individual households. Now this is um, how they are presenting it. Um, and if anyone chooses to look deeper into it, you have to be careful because a lot of this will be written in a manipulative manner to get you to agree with what's on the form. Um, and some of it, the wording is quite legalese as well. So, you know, use your own due diligence, read into it, sit back, consider what's, be, what's being proposed. proposed and have your own thoughts. You know, you don't have to listen to ourselves. You don't have to listen to anyone else. Sit back, chew it over and have a think. So number one was... The purpose is the improvement of public services provided to individuals and households. See, on the service, it all sounds all well and good. Number two, the purpose is the improvement of the well-being of the individuals and households. So they're just looking after us. That's how it's being addressed. They're just looking after us, and it's positive. Because to anyone, including us, that sounds great. Number three, the purpose is... The supporting of the delivery of a specified person's Function. functioning or the administration, administration monitoring or enforcement of a specified person's function. Now, let me break that down and read that again. So, number three is, the purpose is, so in order for us to share every detail about our data, um, every aspect about who we are in the public eye, every bit of data that's held by us anywhere at all, the purpose is the support of the delivery of specified persons functioning or the administration monitoring, 1984, or the enforcement of specified persons function. You see, it's so loosely written that the implications can be vast. So all the answers on this questionnaire, are they, there's six multiple, choice. six multiple choice. So you're either going to say you strongly agree, you agree, you neither agree or disagree, you disagree, you strongly disagree, or you don't know. See, in a lot of options, there's no choice to put added information, added thoughts, your opinion. They are very childlike, multiple choice answers. Um, I'll wait till we go through the questions and I'll explain. But they do ask more. to provide more information of you. On some if of them. If you want to. On some of them. So the first question. The first objective is data sharing should either improve our target a public service provided to individuals and households, improve or target a public service provided to individuals and households, that's A, or B, provide a benefit to individuals or households, to what extent do you agree? So you pick one of them multiple choices. That's the first question. So basically, they want us to endorse releasing our information to everybody that provides a service of some sort. So do you think it'll improve and do you think it'll benefit us by having this? So your options are yes, no, don't know. Now if you say you don't know, so it's going to be an invalidated answer of sorts and there's not going to be a debate. There's not going to be whatever. This is a collation of do you agree or don't you? But and anybody saying, who doesn't don't know, know, you're not actually having uh, an important answer. It's more answer. of an agreement than a disagreement. They'll take it that way anyway. So the second condition number is... Number two. Yeah, number two. The second condition is data sharing 
should improve the well-being of individual or households. Now, you know, it sounds positive on the surface again, but in what way is me sharing my information with everyone and anyone improving my household? You know, we, we've we been told for years and years, protect your data, data protection. What is it? GP... Yes, GDPR. Yes. GDPR uh, is supposed to be data protection. Um, we've all known, don't give your email to different people, don't give too much information out, protect your data. And it's all been for years and years, protect your data, protect your data. Now here we are at a point where we're being cajoled and into... cajoled into giving our information out free willy-nilly to everyone and anyone. Um, to say, you know, that it's an improvement to the well-being of the individual and the household. No, I personally don't agree with that. I, I don't We're see... We're doing fine as we are. Yeah, I'm okay to protect <laughs> my own data. I don't need to just hand it over. That's my opinion. So, number three. Data sharing should support the delivery, administration, monitoring or enforcement of a service provided by a particular public authority or other authorities. So, so anybody really. Yeah, so the saying, you know, it should support the delivery of administration. So they're not qualifying what type of administration. Is it a company down the road? Is it just governmental? Is it medical? Is it someone who comes and surveys your house and they want to do a bit of admin in relation to the contents of whatever? Uh, monitoring, now we all know what monitoring is, you know, so, and other than the government, who is actually doing that monitoring? Or enforcement of a service provided by a particular public authority. So that's your councils, that's your schools, that's anything in the immediate vicinity of public authority and they'll hold every little bit detail on you. So could that affect your children going to a decent school in your area? Could that affect you joining the golfing club? Could that affect you in any shape or form just purely because someone's got access to the whole of your details? And it's being shared. So these are the departments that will share the information. So it's the Secretary of State for the Home Office, the Secretary of State for Defence, the Lord Chancellor, the Secretary of State of Justice, Secretary of State of Education, Secretary of State of Business and Energy, Secretary of State of Work and Pensions, Secretary of State of Communities and Local Government, Secretary of State of Culture, Media and Sport, HM Revenue and Customs, any county council in England, a district council in England, London Borough Council, a combined authority, Common Council of the City of London, totally different to yeah, the, the inner city of London is a completely different city They're to their own the rest city. of London. Council of the Isles of Scilly, for some reason, the Governor. The Greater London Authority, London Fire Commissioner, a Fire and Rescue Authority in England, a Chief Police Officer in England and Wales, the Proprietor of a School, the Proprietor of an Academy, the, the Responsible Person in Relation to an Educational Institute, Colleges, Universities, Nurseries. Anything? Gas and electronic, gas and electric markets authority. So why do they need our details? <laughs> the chief land register. And it's not just your basic information relating to each category. It's across the board. Every piece of your information will be available to each and every contingent on that list. Any person providing services in connection with a specified objective who was in a public authority. So, so how anybody. vague is that? <laughs> Any specified objective who was in public authority. Any that's person. So, it, person, sorry. Yeah, that's any. so vague and open, that could be anybody, anybody. 
and they're proposing four other authorities to join this list. So the four to be added to the list, this list are the Cabinet Office, the Department of Transport, DVLA. Well, they've already got most of you. I know, but they're going anyway. to be entitled to everything yeah. if this passes. The disclosure... Oh, Department of for Food, Environmental and Rural Affairs, DEFRA. So they're like the USDA monitoring of the, UK. of the food and agriculture and everything. They make the rules. So DEFRA are going to have all of our details. For some reason. The Disclosure and Barring Service, the DBS. Can, I, will, can I just touch, go and finish that? Second. Which will hold personal data necessary to help employers make safer recruitment decisions. And all this is subject to parliamentary approval. So that last part there, the disclosure and barring services DBS, which will hold personal data necessary to help employers make safer recruitment decisions. So there could be any discrepancy, whether you were late paying a parking ticket, whether you were behind on paying your utility bills, anything at all that makes you sound um you're not up to date um somewhat uh not a trustworthy character can stop you in the future with a future employer from getting a job because they're open to every aspect of your personal details and any employer can look at it it's disgusting it's absolutely disgusting so number four what extent do you agree that all these listed departments can share your data. Now, again, remember, you've only got agree, totally agree, disagree, don't know. Don't, don't agree, strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, or I don't know. So, <laughs> you know, to what extent do you agree that all these listed departments can share your data? Well, I strongly disagree, I'm afraid. Mm. Number five. What extent do you agree that the authorities added to the list can share your data? So the other four authorities. Can share it with who? <laughs> you know, it's just loose and open. Share it with whom, please? Now, I strongly disagree. <laughs> <laughs> so, number six. There are any other... Are there... Are there any other authorities not listed which you think should be added? So that's a yes or a no answer. So, yeah, and then it says, Health and adult services are not currently included in this list for data sharing. So why have they just said that? They're the only ones that they've mentioned. So basically they're suggesting to you, you could suggest these mm -hmm. for future adding to this programme and you could add health and adult services. But they don't list anybody else, they just list So that they're one. promoting that in the mind thought mm -hmm. for you to suggest that. So what data will be processed? They'll have your full name, your date of birth, home address, your email, photographic images, your passport number and your driving license number. Attributes held by the government departments necessary for verifying the identity of an individual. The outcome of identity checks previously transac transactional. transactional data, for example, income. At this time, the service will not be Aimed. aimed at children under 13 so it's children over 13 so 13 to 16 children what do they need data on them for and again the loose terms so it says attributes held by government departments necessary for verifying the identity of an individual so if you've already got my photograph you've already got me date of birth my home address, my email address, my passport number, my driving license, you've already got everything else. What's these other attributes that you need to identify me? 
it, I mean, you know, it, it's so vague and leaves it open and suggests so many more things to be mm, included, doesn't it? And it's the outcome of checks of your income, things that you're paid out, how much you're getting paid. What's that got to do with... Mm, how you know, much are you behind on different things? And... It's full, you know, disclosure of we are going to monitor absolutely everything. Just take here and sign and agree with us and... You know, we'll be on our way. No. To what extent do you agree? Number seven. Yeah, number seven. To what extent do you agree with the data items above? <laughs> well, strongly disagree. I strongly disagree, but the bulk of it you've already got. You know, we're going to be on a list somewhere of you having me name, Council having me database, got... having me home address. Those who I have had to give email to along the way will have an email address. I personally have withheld my email address, personal email address, um, for a couple of years now, haven't we? Mm. We just chose not to give it away. We give the house phone number to these people and they can contact on the house phone number. Um, they've already got your passport and driving license because everything's so computerized and linked up it has been for a long long time it's the added um, word choices it's the attributes it's how my income relates to what they want to spread to other people for my data you know it, it, it's the added extras and as you say why do they need to hold all this information on you know for children above 13. Mm. Mm. It's, it's just monitor, it's monitor, isn't it? That's all it is. See, they don't want to aim the children under 13. Wonder why that is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to what extent... Number eight. Number eight. To what extent do you consider the sharing of data will lead to any di individual or household losing any benefit. So I'll repeat that. So it says, number eight, to what extent do you consider the sharing of data will lead to any individual or household losing any benefit? Now, we don't believe that this is relating to social security benefit. We believe it's relating to benefits of access, whether it be travelling, whether it be flying on a plane to another country, whether it be crossing a border, whether it be gaining employment, whether it be um, building regulations, whether it be spending in excess of a certain amount, uh, whether it be credit, you, all the other things that these people hold your data on, those will be classed as... Um, benefits. benefits so if something impinges on somebody else losing the benefit of being able to travel in their own car being able to have a building work job done in their own home that they own just because somebody else owns some data on them you know they're not a criminal they're not you know, and anything like that. It's just that somebody's got a piece of information maybe that relates to 10 years ago and now suddenly says, because we've got that piece of information on you, we'll now refuse you access to a service or mm. access to... So you were late paying your parking fine. So the car parks around the country say, well, you can't park in our car parks now because you were two months late. Yeah, it's so vague and open. You don't. You, there's so many things that it could possibly relate to. You know, it's it's loosely written, really loosely written. So number nine. To what extent do you consider losing access to a service? To what extent do you consider the sharing of data will lead, lead to, to an, an individual or a household losing access to a service? Well, I've just covered that as basically the same thing in two separate questions. That could questions. be your bins being collected. They might not pick your bins up. It could be something on your record that doesn't allow that child mm. to attend that school. It could be you doing an adult course and you, you're not able, uh, mm. allowed to access that because they found a discrepancy in your data somewhere. <laughs> it's just bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Number 10. 
Do you think that data sharing will have a negative impact on people? Mm. I personally do. You know, uh, I've got nothing to hide. I'm not a criminal. I just don't want everyone and anyone having access to all of my details, whether that includes my medical details, how I shop, um, what we grow, <laughs> what we grow in the garden, photographs of me, um, a full identity package of everything that makes me as a person. Now, if they'd have brought this in for like uh, murderers or paedophiles, we'd have gone, oh yeah, that's totally a good agree. idea. Yeah. But not, not for right across every the board. Every individual. And the legal term that they're using is persons. Now, if you look at the etymology of the word persons, the word persons is a character. It's not a human, it's not a living being, it's a character. And then if you go down for the definitions, it then becomes a human or whatever. But the initial main thing uh, in the etymology of the word persons, it's actually a character. Well, I'm not a character. I'm not a caricature. I'm a living, breathing woman. He's a living, breathing man. We don't want to share our data. Thank <laughs> you very much. So, this draft regulations must be taken through the UK Parliament by the UK Government. The Cabinet Office is cons consulting with the devolved administrations in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. And although sharing powers will apply across all so this now, is even though the the consultation with the the devolved governments of Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, they've still said data sharing powers will apply across all of them. So what are they talking to them about? They're just going to tell them this is happening to you, as well as England. So it's computer based data. So, you know, is everyone in Wales going to have my data? Is everyone in Scotland going to have my data? Although I live in England, is everyone in Northern Ireland going to have my data? So it's an open source, you know, and that information will be held as an open source for each and every authority, service, Employee. variations, <laughs> attributes, whatever words mm. they're going to throw in. Every single person is just going to have an open list. They're just going to have to type a person's name in and um, they'll, they'll have everything full access. So, are you happy? Number 11. Oh, number 11. Do you have further comments on this proposal? So, we can look at this two ways. So, if you have further comments on this proposal, if you're in agreement with it and you put positivity... That's all to the strength of their, their arm. They, they're going to be made up with that and they're going to push this through. Now, if I was to put, um, I see this as a negative um, thing to happen for me or for the, the whole of the UK. You'll be shot. <laughs> maybe maybe not to that extent. <laughs> well, but I will, I will be noted that I'm a person who rejects that opinion. You know, um, it, it's not kind of um, like an activist mm. uh, registration. An activist role, worn and next to your name. But it'll be kind of like that connotation. Mm. These yeah, are like objectionists. Asterisk. We'll be called mm. objectionists, mm. won't we? Mm. Um, you know, so years ago, we'd have no point, no um, qualms with saying, I object to this and standing up and being publicly noted. But as um, Stop the Bill, uh, Kill the Bill, Kill the Bill was Bill. actually pushed right the way through and people weren't allowed to object, um, protest. protest and all those kind of things. See, even that's loosely worded because if I object to a company, that's classed as me pro protesting because I'll make that verbally or written um, objection. So that's a class as a protest. So it, it's loosely written. So if I was to reply to this on a negative level to say, I don't agree with it. I don't wish to, to go forward with this and I don't wish to agree with it. Is that that objection 
classed as me protesting against this situation. You see, it's all vague and open. Um, it makes you think twice, you know. Mm. So if, if I don't fill the form in, it's a plus to them. It's a plus to them. So, you know, I'd have to consider this long and hard how I address this, what words I choose to use and if they could be used against me, should this go forwards, so that'll actually be on my data in the future that I've objected to this and how would that affect me in any governmental or authoritarian um, situation in the future. But it, no doubt scary, you're going to have to put all your details in to take part in this survey <laughs> so they love them anyway so we can't win. <laughs> So, so number 12 is, are you happy with your answers to be published? So you've got A, I am happy to publish them with my name. I am happy to publish them with my organisation name. I am happy to publish them anonymously. Or I don't want any of it to be published. And of course, you can bet your bottom dollar that they're only, if they do publish any, they're only going to be positive outcomes. They're not going to be anyone in, a, in you know, disagreement mm -hmm. with it. So basically, the timetable for it all is July 23 is the draft laying data for the statutory instruments. So that's when they've collated all the data and they've gone through it all and they know what they're on about then, supposedly. October the 23rd is the enactment... 23. Uh, sorry, October 23, 2023 is the enactment of powers. So they're putting it all in place then. All the data that they've collected and now they're going to put it all in place. And then December 2023, data sharing will be in place. So <laughs> it's coming in December 23. What's your thoughts on all of this? Is this something that you've come across before? Is this something you've looked at yourself? Or is it completely a shock? Or do you agree with everything here? Um, and you think it should be in place? Um, let us know your thoughts. It'd be quite interesting to know who, who thinks what. There is no judgment. We're all entitled to our own opinion. We can all debate like adults. We can all talk like adults. There will be no fallout who disagrees with our opinion. But Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger, <laughs> yeah. We personally have suspected something like this coming for a long, long time. Um, there was an issue with our local GPs. Um a few years ago, wasn't it, when um, data sharing from the yeah. in the medical situation, um, and if you wanted to actively um, to opt, out, opt out and say you objected to your medical information being shared with whoever, mm -hmm. you had to literally fill a form in, sign it, and say, I don't agree with that. And w we did that several mm. years ago, didn't we? Um, and from that point, we knew if you can do it with a medical situation, it was coming across the board for everything else. Mm. We knew the 1984 scenario would be pushed and pushed. As I say, we never thought it'd be in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. We never thought we'd be going through this right now and see it happening. But, you know. They told us in the film, it was a We Live, was it? We Live, don't know. 1987, that. it was made. They told us then. They called it science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us this evening. Um, I think there's plenty of food for thought. Um, take some consideration. Um, if you're in the UK, um, I think we all need to take a good hard look at this form. We need to consider and um, work out the words, if we're putting any extra input in besides yes, no, um, the words that we choose to use um, and how we phrase it um, and really consider what we actually contribute to this form. Because they will be used against you. To not take part in the form is not actually going to help the situation, I feel. I know, but I think... They know that the people that aren't going to take part 
I know, but they, if they've got... I'm going to agree. If, if they've got 40% of the UK that don't take part, then, they, you know, they've got 45% who yeah, take part with a Yeah, but you're still going to have to put all your data in to answer the questions. So. I know, it's a, it's a difficult one. You have to decide for yourself, I suppose, mm. you know. Okay. Okay, thanks we'll for joining us. We'll speak Bye. to you soon. Bye-bye.